Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a guide on everything you need to know about Python web development. So this video should serve as a guide to help you figure out all the options that you have related to web development with Python. What libraries are available? What's the difference between these libraries? Which one should you learn first? How's the learning curve? What does each library provide? So I will cover all these details throughout this video following this specific outline. So first I will start with a brief introduction follow up with some key concepts about web development before we start and get into the different Python web frameworks. I will cover five main Python web frameworks. I chose these main five because they are technically the most popular and have the most users and developers working with them. So these are the five most popular ones as far as I know. Next, what I will talk about is the key services and features of each framework. So after briefly going over each of these frameworks, what it does, the features it has, I will compare all the features of these frameworks and talk about what offerings these frameworks have. Next, I will talk about the pros and cons of each framework. This means that what makes one framework better than the other, what makes another one more useful for beginners or more useful for advanced people. I will cover all of these and the pros and cons. Next, I will talk about some alternative Python web frameworks. So other than the main five that I have discussed or I will discuss first, I will talk about some alternative ones. These are slightly less popular, but they are worth mentioning because this is an all you need to know guide. I actually have to mention them. Finally, or before finally, at number six, I will talk about some unique Python frameworks. These are things not necessarily just for web development or maybe for web development, but with a special twist. You'll see what I mean when I get there. But these are alternative tools and frameworks that you can know if you will be doing web development with Python. And finally, I will talk about other web development tools and concepts that you need to learn. So if you're getting into web development in general, not only do you need to know some Python things, I will be covering other concepts related to other languages or other tools, things that you can link with your Python web framework, and you will see those in the number seven part of the outline. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, first things first, as an introduction, I just want to clarify one thing about web development. This is the comparison between client side and server side. I'm going to explain this simply because maybe some beginners aren't aware of the exact difference. So the client side, this is what we usually refer to as the front end. So when you hear someone is a front end developer, they usually work with the client side. This is the code that runs on the user's browser. So this presents the user interface, handles the inputs and makes API requests to the server. So this is the UI that you as a user can see when you're browsing any certain website. When you write inputs, when you press on buttons, when you write some data, this all gets handled by the client side and then is sent through an API or an application programming interface to the server. So APIs are sort of like the middleman between the front end and the back end. So think of it as someone who is taking information from one place to another. It's like a mailman or a middleman. Next, we have the server side. So this is the backend. This is the code that runs on, this, on the server. It's a bridge between the client and a database. So this usually talks to the database. It performs logic, processes the request. So everything that's really heavy on the processing, the logic and the database stuff, this all gets done from the server side. And we make this distinction between client side and server side because it's important to understand the capabilities of these different Python web frameworks. So later on, when I tell you that this web framework is full stack, this means you can use it to build both on the client side and on the server side, or I might tell you that this framework only works on the server side. So I wanted to clarify these concepts before we get into it, just so that we know what we're talking about when we're comparing these frameworks. So the first framework we're going to talk about is Django. Django is extremely popular. Arguably, it's the most popular of all of these. It's really useful. It's a full stack web framework. By full stack, like we talked about before, this means you can build both on the front end and on the back end. The main benefit of Django is that it comes with a lot of built in functionalities. Things like the admin panel, authentication, forms, databases all come in out of the box, totally built in, easier for you to, to get started with and to use in your application without wasting too much time writing some code. It's really suitable for large scale applications. So you can build both small and large applications with it. And there are a lot of jobs. So you will often find job posts hiring for a Django developer. This is super important if you're a beginner, but you're learning so that you can one day get a job in some of these tools. This is really important to consider because there's tons of jobs hiring for Django developers. 
Also, it does have a specific type of coding style. Some people like it, but some people also don't. This makes the learning curve steeper. So if you are a total beginner, you've never written any website or built anything related to the web in your life, you might find this a bit difficult. However, as you get more used to it and you build more and more projects and you um, learn different things, you will be more comfortable with Django. But it's one thing to note, it does have a steep learning curve. Now the next one is Flask. This one is also very popular. Django and Flask are the two most popular frameworks. This one is not a full stack web framework, it's a micro web framework. By micro framework, this means that you can actually really only build on the server side. You can, however, have different client side applications using different extensions with Flask. However, the main purpose, it was designed to be used on the server side. It was also designed to be simple and lightweight. This makes it really easy to get started with. Writing the code is super easy. By lightweight, we mean that it doesn't really require tons of code. The files are usually pretty small and you can just import it as a library and get started with using it. It's super useful for building APIs. So these interfaces, the middleman that we said exists between the front end and the back end, this is super useful for building them. There are many extensions you can use with it. So while Flask is pretty simplistic, it's minimalistic, there are different extensions you can use with Flask, which make building with Flask much more simple and much more effective. The learning curve is not as steep as Django, so you can actually learn fast Flask much faster than you can learn Django, and it's also suitable for small to medium projects. So it's not really suitable for these very large scale applications, but it's really suitable when you just want to whip something up really quick, you can just use Flask. The next one is Fast API. This one is relatively newer. It hasn't been around as long as the other two, but it's also growing in popularity. I'm personally a fan of Fast API. The development is super fast. It allows you to build these APIs in a very, very rapid manner. This means that you as a developer don't need to spend too much time setting them up. You, the building, the development process, is super fast as the name suggests. It's suitable for both small and large projects. And the learning curve is low if you're already familiar with some common web development practices, especially the concept of APIs. However, it is higher and it's steeper if you are unfamiliar. So if you're not really used to all the different web dev stuff, this might be a bit difficult, but you will get used to it as you learn more and more. Because it's newer, you might find less resources and community available online. But as I said before, it's growing in popularity, so there are tons of new resources coming out every single day, new videos, new stack overflow posts, things like that. This is super important to consider when you are choosing a framework. You don't want to choose something that no one else is using, because then when you run into a problem, you're unlikely to find the correct solution for your issue. The next framework is Pyramid. This one is less popular than the others. Like Flask, it is a micro framework and it's suitable for small and medium sized projects. It's easy to get started with like Flask. However, why would you choose Flask over it? This is because Flask is much more popular. As I said before, the importance of community, especially in software development is highly, highly important. You need people to be working on the same thing as you. This way you'll find more tutorials, more courses, more blog posts, most, more people answering questions on Stack Overflow. This is really important and this enables you to have access to more knowledge and more information online. Does that mean you shouldn't learn the less popular things? Definitely not. But as a beginner, you would want to get started with something that's more popular because then you'll find more resources about it and you're also more likely to find jobs or freelance work related to it. The final one of the big five that we're going to talk about is Web2Py. As the name suggests, it's a web framework. It's an alternative to Django. So it's not a micro framework like the ones we discussed previously. It's a full stack web development framework. This means you can write everything from the client side to the server side. However, not as popular. So it offers features out of the box, just like Django. It's similar to Django overall, but again, the community is much smaller. It's not as popular, not as advanced as Django. However, it does provide alternatives to many of the features and the built-in out-of-the-box functionalities that Django provides. So now that we've covered the main five frameworks, what we're going to talk about next is the key services and features offered by each framework. Before I start comparing them using a table, I'm going to first describe what these services are and what these features that we're looking for. The first one is UI development. So here we're talking about tools and resources that you can use for developing the user interface. So this is the UI. 
So you as a user, when you go to a website, for example, you're on youtube.com, what you see is the interface. This is the part that the user sees. And UI development is important. We want to see whether there are any built-in tools related to these web frameworks where you can build UIs in an easy way. Things like forms, templates, these simplify our lives as developers when we're building the UI. So we're going to check which of these frameworks actually has some UI development. The next thing is API creation. So API creation means the tools that we use for creating APIs. We said that APIs are the middleman between the client and the server or between the front end and the back end. So this is super important. It allows our systems to communicate with each other and exchange data, which eventually goes to the database. So here we want to see which of these frameworks actually has capabilities for building APIs. Now, finally, another thing is the object relational mapping or ORM. This is the process of mapping objects in a program with objects in a database or with rows in a database. This makes it much easier to work with data and database and helps us actually write data driven applications. This is super important. It also helps us to avoid writing complex SQL queries. Not all frameworks provide it, so we'll see which of these frameworks actually does provide ORM. Now, the next one is authentication and authorization. So this is what we use for user management. User authentication means allowing users to sign in and sign up into our web applications. And authorization means authorizing different users and giving them different permissions to access different things in the app. So we'll see which of these frameworks also provides these different features. Next is templating. So templatings are templating refers to the tools and the resources we use for creating templates for a web application. So these templates, they help us define reusable pieces of HTML that can be used in different places within our application without having to rewrite a ton of code and without wasting too much time on the development. So this makes it super easy to populate them with data and stick them in different places in our application. So let's actually see what each framework provides out of these five features that we listed. So this is a table summarizing everything. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Feel free to pause and actually take a deep look at it. But here we're comparing the five different frameworks that we talked about with the five different features that we mentioned. So for example, for UI development, you can see that both Django and Web2Py provide built-in tools for UI development, but Flask, Fast API, and Pyramid don't really provide these things. With API creation, built-in support is provided by Django, Fast API, Pyramid, and Web2Py. However, Flask doesn't really provide it, but you can use a Flask extension called Flask Rest Restful Extension, which will actually help you build these APIs. Next, we have the ORM. Django and Web2Py have built an ORM. Flask, Fast API, and Pyramid don't, but you can use something called SQL Alchemy to talk to your SQL databases. So this actually helps you instead of using the built-in ORM that is provided by the other services. Now, next, we have authentication and authorization. Django and Web2Py, it's built-in. Flask, Fast API, and Pyramid, it's not built-in. You can use external libraries, though, for authentication. Finally, templating, so creating these web templates. In Django and in Web2Py, you have built-in templating engines. So you see Web2Py is pretty similar to Django in terms of the offering and the services and the features. However, as we said before, it's a less popular alternative. In Flask, you can use the Jinja2 templating engine. Fast API, there is no templating engine. And in Pyramid, you can use the Chameleon templating engine. So to summarize everything that we talked about regarding these five main frameworks, let's have a table with all the pros and cons for each framework, as well as which type of applications it is suitable for. So which size applications. So if we take a look, we can see that Django, the pros, lots of built-in functionality, as we said, and it's good for complex and large scale apps. It's high security and it actually enables you to develop pretty rapidly. The cons, it can be too much for smaller projects. It has a steep learning curve. As a new developer, a new beginner, this might be a bit too difficult to get started with. Next, there's Flask. So this is simple, lightweight, good for small projects, and you have more control over the development process. It doesn't really force you to, to follow a specific coding style like Django does. However, limited built-in functionality and more manual work is required than is with Django. Next, we have Fast API. This one is fast, efficient, easy to use, easy to understand, good for API development, really fast and efficient all around. However, as we said before, it's relatively new and not as many built-in functionalities. Pyramid, 
is flexible, lightweight, and it offers control over the development process, pretty similar to Flask. However, it does have a steep learning curve, it's not as popular, and it also has limited built-in functionality. Next, we have Web2Pi. It's easy to understand, easy to use, and it provides a ton of built-in functionality just like Django. However, it does have limited scalability, it's not, it's not as good as Django in terms of scaling to large size applications, and it's not as widely used as the others. This means it has a very small community and very small number of resources available online. So in terms of suitability for which size applications, Django, you can use it for complex, large-scale applications, Flask, more small to medium-sized, Fast API, both small and large, Pyramid, small to medium, and Web2Pi, small to medium. So this is the pros and cons of each different framework, and now we know all the services these frameworks provide, as well as the pros and cons and differences between them. Now, we've covered the five most popular Python web frameworks. However, there are some alternatives. They're not as popular, but they're worth mentioning if you want to see all the different options that you have. The first one is Tornado. This one has been designed to be fast and efficient. It's similar to Fast API in terms of its focus on scalability performance, but it provides a lower level API than Fast API. So here, this is the one minor difference. Also, it's much less popular. So I'm not going to repeat this for, for every single one of these, but all of these are less popular than the ones I already mentioned, which makes them, which gives them this con in terms of the fact that they have a small community and not as many resources. Next one is Bottle. So this one is microweb, very similar to Flask in terms of its simplicity, lightweight code base, but it doesn't have as many features as Flask. So here you don't have enough features, like it's very simple, but you still don't have enough features. It feels like a trade-off, which is why it's not as popular. Next is Turbo Gears. This one is full stack, very similar to Django and Web2Pi. Here, it does have support for large and complex web applications, just like Django and Web2Pi, but again, it's not as popular as the others. Now Falcon, this is the last one I want to talk about. It's minimalist and high performance. So it's very similar to fast API. It focuses on performance and efficient handling of APIs, but it's much more minimalistic than fast API, which can be too much for some people. Also not as popular. Now that we've covered most of the options for Python web frameworks, I'm going to talk about three different unique web frameworks. Each of these provides one specific application or one specific thing that makes it unique, and this is why it wasn't listed with the others. The first one is Anvil. So Anvil is actually pretty new. It's a low-code framework to build complex web apps with minimal coding. Here, you would only write Python code, and then you can use an interface to drag and drop different components like buttons, text edits, uh, labels, inputs, things like that. You would use a drag and drop interface to design the interface. Then you would write the rest of your code in Python. So it's low code. You don't need to write too much code. It's really convenient for beginners, super useful, super nice. Now the next one, is Dash. So Dash is an open source framework for building analytical web applications. This means data-driven dashboards. So when you see a dashboard with tons of charts, tons of data, different information, these are usually built with Dash. Of course, you can build them with tons of other frameworks. You can use different libraries for the charts, but Dash enables you to build them in a really quick and easy manner, super useful. So Dash is super important to check out, especially if you're into building these data-driven applications. Another thing for data-driven applications is Streamlit actually also enables you to build dashboards. It's an open source framework, but you can build all types of web applications in Python. It does have a very simple interface and you do not need to know any HTML or CSS to actually use Streamlit. So these are three unique Python frameworks. Do keep them on your radar if you are interested in these topics, in the topic of low code, in the case of Anvil, or in dashboards for Dash and Streamlit. Keep them on your radar. You never know when you're going to need them. But they're not the main Python web frameworks, but there's something to keep in mind if you're looking to build these types of applications. Finally, the very last thing I'm going to talk about today is other different web development tools and concepts that you should know if you're looking to get into web development with Python. These things are not specific to Python whatsoever. So here, these are things that are related to general web development, but I highly recommend you learn them because if you get into web development with Python, you will actually be needing these in the future. 
First thing is databases. Most web applications these days need to be connected to a database to store and handle all the data that comes in from the users. So things such as PostgreSQL, MySQL, and SQLite, these are different SQL databases. However, you can choose to use a NoSQL database like MongoDB. Database are super important. They are a core component of every single website that you see nowadays. So this is super important. Keep it in mind, you have to learn databases as you progress in your web development journey. Journey. Next thing is web servers. So you can learn either Apache or Nginx or any other type of web server, but it's important to learn one as you go ahead in your web development journey. Front end frameworks. So here, these are actually JavaScript frameworks most of the time. So this isn't specific to Python. However, front end frameworks such as React.js or AngularJS are super important. Later on, now while you can build a front end with these different Python web development frameworks, Later on, what you can do is you can separate the front end and the back end, build your front end in something like React, which enables you to build these really complex, really interesting web apps with beautiful interfaces. You build your front end with React, and then you have your back end in something like Django or Flask or Fast API. And then you would have an API as the middleman between these two. You'd have a back end in Python and a front end in JavaScript. So later on, as you get more advanced, you will be learning these JavaScript frameworks. It's really nice to have them in your toolbox, really nice to have on your resume, and really nice for building more advanced and more beautiful web apps. Next is CSS and CSS frameworks such as Bootstrap. So styling is going to be a part of building any UI. You you will need to write CSS to make any UI attractive and presentable. So this is another thing that you will learn, especially if you get into more the front end side of things. Now you might be learning web development and choose to remain on the back end and get a job as a back end developer with Python. However, this is if you actually want to build full stack apps or you want to be somewhere on the front end, CSS is going to be super important. The last thing is deployment platforms. So after building all these web apps, you will actually want to deploy them. So Heroku is one option for you to build and deploy your web app. So this is another thing that you will learn later on when you choose to deploy your applications. All right, so that's really it for this video. I hope you found it useful. I covered everything you need to know to get started with web development with Python. Do let me know if you liked it, leave a comment and a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.